Hi, my name is Andre Williams. I'm an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, and real estate investor from New Jersey. I think in order for us to have a conversation about economics, we have to look at the urban communities all around the country. So when I invest in real estate, I take abandoned properties and with my construction company, we rehabilitate these properties and at the same time offer affordable housing programs to families in those same communities. So we're not asking for families that don't live in the communities to move to these blighted areas. We're saying, no, the people that live in those communities need stabilization because if we don't provide opportunities for them, gentrification will ultimately uh, come to pass in those areas. So what we try to do is get in there basically and purchase some of these abandoned properties, help people become homeowners, help people become uh, proprietors and own different businesses. So it's up to us. We can't wait for somebody else to come in, you know, save our communities. We have to do it ourselves. So I urge, you know, most of the churches, most of the general contractors in the area, uh, work with the municipality, form a union so that you guys can take over some of these abandoned properties and reap the benefits of it. Um, I look at how, you know, the black community is being treated and how black men are being treated, but we are the answer to our own prayers. God has already given us uh, the, the wisdom and the fortitude to be able to, you know, work through some of these situations and bring back our own community. So if you're interested in you know, being a part of Black Wall Street, every urban area around the country technically can be that Black Wall Street. So if you own a business or you have desires to own a business, don't go looking for, you know, someone else to come and provide those opportunities for you. They're right there in your community right now. You don't have to go outside your uh, neighborhoods and start purchasing other properties to try to recreate it. All these abandoned houses um, in the urban areas around the country have the same situation. They're not providing income for those municipalities. So when that takes place, Basically, you're left with abandoned properties and abandoned properties affects everything across the board from uh, public parks, public pools, um, after school programs, the uh, public libraries, all of those things are affected when you don't have the city taxes being paid by these property taxes. And so now the government will look at that particular area and say, OK, if this community isn't able to take care of itself, we're not going to drop any more money in that community. And so now you're left with thousands and thousands of abandoned properties and people tend to move away because what does that happen? You know, what does that attract? It attract crime. It attract uh, people breaking into some of these properties and the, the community becomes blighted. And once that happens, you know, they'll let the community go down there, let the accumulation of these uh, abandoned happens, uh, abandoned houses persist and then Years later, you will see gentrification come around. So let's look at Brooklyn, for instance. They went through a gentrification process. Most of those neighborhoods were lived in by black community, you know, black families, they lived in those homes. But once gentrification came around, now you go to Brooklyn, you know, you got the Barclays Center, and now the prices of these homes are too high for black people to continue to live in those areas. Let's look at certain areas of Washington, D.C., certain areas of uh, Philadelphia, certain areas of uh, East Orange, um, same thing is happening. So all around the country in these urban areas, uh, I think it's our time to tap into these gold mines and invest with one another. Instead of me taking these abandoned homes and turning, them, turning people into renters, our goal is to take these abandoned properties, rehab them, and then put them in the hands of a you know, potential homeowner. So instead of us renting a property to you, a three or four bedroom home, for $1,500, $1,600 a month, we'll rather take that same property and sell it to you for say $1,000 a month. Because we know that if you can afford to pay $1,500, $1,600 a month, you surely can pay $1,000 a month. And what we'll do then is hold the mortgages for you for 15 to 20 years and allow you to pay us for living in that property opposed to sending you to a bank to get denied for loans. So this can be duplicated in every urban area around the country. It just takes some, you know, some people uh, that really wanna make change happen and invest in themselves and invest in their communities.
What we do with Bass Contracting is we partner Bass Contracting with our nonprofit organization, which is called One Heaven Inc. One Heaven Inc. basically is a 501c3. So we're able to work with churches, we're able to work with the municipality, and sometimes we're able to even get some of these abandoned houses uh, donated to us. So now, if we teach the churches, the 501c3s, how to get some of these properties donated to them, because right now they're not bringing any, any income. But if we put them in the hands of the church, you know, most of the time the churches have members um, that have real estate license or are uh, licensed contractors or developers. And they, not, they don't even know it because these conversations don't take place. So what we're saying is let's begin to have the conversation of who do you have in your congregation that can help fix up these properties. Like we'll teach you the blueprint that we use here in New Jersey. We'll take these abandoned houses. Some of them are donated from Wells Fargo Bank, Bank of America, the municipality, and other families in the community. So once they donate that property, then you know we basically uh, build business credit. We build business credit with each of the properties that we own so that the funding uh, can persist. Now, they do have federal funding that's out there, but again, we don't wanna put ourselves in a position uh, to, to be begging for money. So if we take it upon ourselves, build our business credit using our EIN number, using our DUNS number, now we can take that same abandoned house, fix it up with our own business credit and our own financing, and put it in the hands of a family that's going to live there and appreciate the home. Fresh Start Training Academy, um, what we do is we basically we have a curriculum. It's a general contracting uh, curriculum that we teach people to construction trade. So we basically teach them uh, carpentry, we teach them roofing, masonry, uh, introductory to plumbing. Um, we also teach them uh, flooring, framing, and it's a three-month course, but it's a three-month crash course. So in that training, now we're saying once you graduate from uh, with this certification, we can put you in a position to be employed by our construction company. So technically, Fresh Start Training Academy would be the trade school. If people are on unemployment or if people coming home from prison um, and need a job or need training so that they can get a job, Fresh Start Training Academy uh, basically is in place to provide that training. We also train uh, young ladies and young men uh, to be certified nursing aides, and we train them to be home health aides so they can receive a certification in that, and also uh, some can get their real estate license through our school as well. Um, I have a book that I wrote. Um, it's called Everybody is a Real Estate Investor, Yes, Even You. Um, you can purchase that book um, on my website, IamAndreWilliams.com. Um, you can also purchase it on One Heaven, Inc., uh, web page and on all the other social media platforms and I also have it um, with uh, online with Amazon and with Walmart so you can go on walmart.com type in my book name everybody is a real estate investor and my book will come up so we have uh, relationships with Walmart and with Amazon you can purchase the book on there plus again we own day daycares and preschools too we were able to take these abandoned buildings I'm going back over 20 years. I've been in business for over 20 years uh, owning my own daycares and preschools, but we were able to take these abandoned buildings and turn them into for-profit businesses. And when you look in the blighted areas, you see all types of commercial real estate as well as residential. So whatever your creativity is, whatever your passion is, I urge you to look at the properties in your neighborhoods or the properties in the neighborhoods that you came from and go back and build there. But special needs kind of encompass, uh, you know, affordable housing, special needs encompass uh, low income to moderate income families. Uh, it encompass group homes. And what I like about group homes is the, the, the government really don't want to have people in the facilities anymore, so to speak. So instead of you being in a, in a hospital setting, um, they would rather you be in a home setting to where you can be around a family, you can have dinner with the family, you can learn family values, you can go out and go to the movies and go out to dinner and go for walks and go to the mall. So they would rather have these individuals that might have slight disabilities in a home setting. So what we do is take some of the uh, abandoned properties that we have bought or some of the foreclosed properties that we have bought 
and we turn them into group homes. And we're able to provide a service that one, will help people that wouldn't normally uh, have a family setting, we, we, we put them in a family setting. And some of these people, um, you know, when I look at it, have become a part of our family because my sisters have um, clients that they have been taken care of and we don't look at them as technically clients. We know that's the term that the state and the government use, but we look at, look at them as Tiffany or a, a, a Shamika or who, you know what I mean? We call them by name and they're literally a part of our family. And ever since I can remember, my mom have taken children in, have taken adults in, my sisters, my aunts, you know, we have a family that have a heart for the community and plus they're involved in ministry as well. So when we look at people that need help, that need family or the forgotten about people, instead of leaving them in facilities, invite them into your home. Show them what love is like, show them what the family is like. Let them have a chance to take a family photo and go to family reunions because they, they need, you know what I mean? And, Maybe somehow they ended up in that group home or in that, in that hospital setting, but they're still people and they're still God's children. So instead of leaving them in there, we take it upon ourselves to train people in home health aid, train people in certified nursing aid, and then we take these individuals out of these uh, hospital settings and provide group homes for them. My, my goal is to be a part of something bigger than me. So when I, when I speak to families or I speak to groups that I train, um, I always tell them, let's find out why God put you here. You know what I mean? Let's, let's, let's find out what your purpose is in life. Like God has you know, shown me my purpose for years and some of us have many talents. Like I have a record and film company. Um, I've been doing that for over 20 something years. And I'm able to say, okay, to my children that sing and that have ideas about music and writing, I'm able to provide them opportunities to be able to express themselves. You know what I mean? So when I look at my purpose, I'm living it every single day. You know what I mean? I've been working for myself for over 20 years. I got over uh, 40 something employees and it's growing. Uh, we've flipped hundreds of homes over the last 20 years. And we, we're getting into buying multifamilies now. I have a 14 unit apartment complex that we just bought in Trenton, New Jersey. I have two, two, two 10 unit apartment buildings that we're building in Ewing, New Jersey. So our goal is to really live out our dreams. Speak to you know, you know, people in the community, speak to young men and young women and tell them that, listen, if I did it, and I come from same similar situations. My skin is the same color as yours. Like whatever ideas you have, whatever dreams you have, they can be a reality. It's just surround yourself with people that will encourage you and support you and your dreams can become a reality. So to answer your question, yes, we hire people that have been uh, locked up before. Um, about 70% of my staff uh, has been locked up. I was locked up so. <laughs> and I hired myself, you know what I mean? But no, we actually do provide opportunities for young men and young women that have been incarcerated. Let's be real. You look at any black family um, in an urban area, I guarantee you they got an uncle, a cousin, a brother, a friend, or a friend of a family that they know that's been to prison. That's just the way it is. And it's sad but at the same time, it's an opportunity for us to change things. Like we didn't take drugs to our community. We didn't fly it in from, you know, Cuba or any of the other countries that it was manufactured in. So when we look at it, those drugs was placed in our community to be a distraction for young men and women. Now some of these same drugs are legalized that they are still serving time for. So when they come home and they have a record or they have a felon and these corporate companies won't hire them, this is an opportunity for me as a black business owner to say, I will give you a job. I will give you job training. I will give you housing, you know what I mean? And, and give you an opportunity to you know, basically take care of your family. When they took trades out of the schools you know what I mean? There was a time when you could look at, uh, you know, getting a trade. You could learn how to do auto mechanic in school. I'm going back to the 60s and 70s and the uh, 50s. These guys were able to go to school, high school, come out of high school with a plumbing certification and go get a job and take care of their families. They were able to come out of the, uh, high school with a mechanic degree. 
for a cosmetology degree and they were able to go right from high school and get a job or open up a salon because these were provided uh, in high school. Now, there's hardly any trades in the high schools anymore. So now we have to think, why, why were they removed? You know what I mean? This was a time when the industrial age was booming. So these guys could come out and, and, and make a living. So when you think about some of the families that supported uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, supported Malcolm X, they did it because they had the money to do it. They did it because they were able to get behind them and push. So now when you remove that money from these individuals, you remove that way of making money or taking care of their families, and you place drugs in those communities, now you set them back because it's either they're going to sell the drugs or they're going to use the drugs. And most of them chose to, you know, to, to sell drugs or do, you know, whatever they had to do to take care of their families. Once they got locked up, they weren't able to come home and get jobs anymore. So now what do they do? They go back to either doing what they were doing in the beginning or somebody like us have to step up and say, hey, let's provide them an opportunity um, to legally take care of their family. So to help with recidivism, um, I bought this, like I said, a 14 uh, unit apartment complex. Uh, and it's called Project Fresh Start, named after Fresh Start Training Academy. So in that program, we're giving these men a second chance. We're helping them reconstruct their lives. So we'll take them, uh, work with their parole officer, you know what I mean? Get them housing, get them job training, and then get them employment, and hopefully permanent housing after that. All right, so real quick, if you wanna get in touch with us, look up One Heaven Inc on Facebook, on Instagram, and One Heaven Inc. Is, uh, One Heaven Inc com is our website. Uh, we have Fresh Start Training Academy. That's uh, .com, and you can look it up on Facebook and Instagram. You can look up Showliz Entertainment Record and Film Company. Um, it has its own website, and it's also on all the social media platforms. And again, uh, I am Andre Williams .com. Uh, You'll be able to get in touch with me and uh, learn more about what we do. And then One Heaven Inc., uh, if you wanna you know, contact us to come and you know, teach a small group or do it over Zoom, uh, you know, feel free to shoot us an email, um, look us up on social media, and we'll be more than happy to come and teach on these different topics and teach you how to build your community and take your communities back. Peace.